What? A custom Chords of Orion baritone guitar? Let's check it out. That's right. Several months ago, 10S Guitars contacted me and said, Hey, Bill, we really like what you're doing on the channel. Could we build you a custom baritone guitar? And I thought about it for 30 seconds and I said, Heck yeah. So before I go into the guitar, let's let's talk about the company for a minute. 10S Guitars is located in China, and unlike many Chinese guitar companies, they're focused on custom building. Isn't that interesting? So in addition to uh, being able to buy kind of stock guitars from their website, you can also order a custom build. And they've been doing this, I believe, if I remember right, off the website for about the last four years or so. So relatively new for them. And as they kind of talk to me over the over time, you know, via email, it appears that they're really trying to make inroads and kind of establish themselves as a, kind of a kind of a high end Chinese guitar builder. For those of us in the U.S., that might seem a little odd, as we consider probably Chinese guitars to be inexpensive and perhaps of lesser quality. So they're really trying to take a different tact, and and they've contacted several different YouTuber influencers, and I've seen a couple of the videos, and I got kind of interested. So I said, yeah, that's why I said, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So let's talk about the build here of what they created for me. It is, as I mentioned, a baritone guitar. The scale length is 27.7 inches long, and by design, that is the same as my P. Uh, PRS, I gotta remember that name, PRS guitars, okay, the uh, the SE277. So same scale length as that, which I really, really like. I think it's a great length for a baritone. Let's talk about the neck a little bit. It is a maple neck. However, it is a three-piece maple neck, so hopefully you can see that. There is what I believe is a walnut strip down the middle. And one of the things I really like about that walnut strip is it's not sticky, so by any stretch, you know, it's my, at least for my hands, it's nice and smooth and my, my thumb can kind of ride up and down the neck as I need it to but I can feel a, just a little bit of the grain and I really like it. It's a very, it's a very nice tactile sensation, at least for me. Let's talk about tuners up here. Obviously there are six in line. These are locking tuners. I do not know what the brand is. I do not believe they're Schaller's, but they work really well. I have switched the strings once since I got the guitar and it was a breeze swapping out the strings. All right, let's continue on with the neck. Um, it's an ebony fingerboard, at least that is what I asked for, and it does look like ebony to me. I also ask for no inlays on the fingerboard. That's my preference. I like kind of a kind of a plain, dark fingerboard in appearance. They did ask if I would like the chords of Orion logo at the twelfth fret, and I thought that was kind of cool. I'll show you a close-up here, and I thought they did a really nice job with the logo. Thanks a lot, 10S. I really appreciate that. The body is kind of a Telecaster-ish shape, but it's not exactly a Telecaster. It's got an interesting and comfortable cut here on the top of the body, and actually I found it very you know, I thought, whoa, that's a little bit different, but once I started playing the, the guitar, I found, wow, my uh, my arm fits really nicely on that cutout of the body. The wood is a maple top, so it's a cap, maple cap. The back is mahogany, and it is semi-hollow, as you can tell by the hole here in the body. All right, so pickups. Um, I ask for two humbuckers and I ask for relatively low gain humbuckers. And as I think back again to the PRS baritones that I have, one of them is the solid body baritone with two humbuckers and they're high gain humbuckers. And I have trouble with those. So I ask 
10S, if they could put lower gain humbuckers, maybe like a Seymour Duncan 59-ish kind of kind of thing. And um, they said, well, we can't get Seymour Duncan, but we can put in a pickup that is equivalent in terms of having maybe a more vintage tone, a little bit lower gain. And what they put in are Tesla pickups. Not very familiar with Tesla pe pickups, but as you'll hear in a minute, I think they sound pretty good. What else can I say? Well, there's a stop a bridge with a stop tail piece, and it is through the body, so you string through the back of the body. It's got a volume knob, a tone knob, and a three-way pickup selector. I'm not much into uh, doing coil splitting or anything like that, so I didn't, I didn't ask for that. So that's the guitar. Let's take a listen to some of the tones. Here is a clean sound with the bridge pickup. <laughs> Kind of nice. Uh, if I roll the tone all the way down, here's what I get. And if I roll it all the way up. So there's a lot of tonal variation just available through that tone knob. If you've been hanging out here, you know that I very rarely turn the tone knob all the way up. I generally run it at about three or four, and I adjust my amp model accordingly to bring up the treble just a little bit. And I can tell it is a lower gain pickup, which is nice. Um, I, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it through YouTube, but I can also hear the resonance of the body kind of coming through the pickup. Yeah, kind of nice. Here's both pickups. Oh yeah, I really like that bell kind of chime uh, to the tone. And then finally, just the neck pickup. All right, so this is ambient guitar, right? And it's ambient baritone guitar. So I'm going to throw a little delay on and see what we get. Because for me, hearing a guitar in the context of my signal chain is really most helpful. like that. Um, I'm going to go into the middle position with both pickups. That's typically where I tend to live with a lot of my tones. Occasionally go to that bridge pickup for volume swells. that a lot. 
So what does this sound like with a little bit of distortion? Now, you guys know I'm not a metal player and I go for tones that metal players typically don't like. They're a little more uh, mid-range heavy, but here's kind of a tone um, that I might use uh, for leads. <laughs> Now, if I turn the tone knob all the way down and put it into the middle position, this is kind of where I go for leads. And it definitely gets the uh, kind of tone that I'm looking for. That's a quick walkthrough of the guitar. One of the things I really appreciate about 10S is in my back and forth with them, they said, Bill, we want you to be totally honest on the video to let everybody know what your real impressions are. And so I'm gonna do that right now. So generally, I'm pretty impressed with the guitar. Um, I like the overall build quality I'm going to mention just a couple things, but you know, all in all, it's really well put together. The neck and body joint, it's a bolt on neck, by the way, is very clean. The neck pocket is very tight, which I really like. The, uh, the, the fret job is nice and smooth. And by the way, they're jumbo frets, which I really love on a baritone. Um, you know, that is all great. I do have a few nitpicks. You knew there were a few, right? I do have a few nitpicks that I want to mention to you. First and foremost, this is probably the main nitpick that I have, and that has to do with the break angle of the strings as they come over the nut and then onto the neck. So this is a one-piece neck, all right? So the headstock and the neck are just all one piece. And that is okay. There is nothing wrong with that construction at all. But the way 10S has this constructed, the strings, I don't know if you can see it there. I'll, I'll provide a picture here and put it up so you can see it better. The strings have very little break angle. And that is a bit problematic. Um, you probably are not gonna be able to hear it too well. Let me pull it up, hold it up to the microphone that you can't see. So if I, if I, I'm just kind of wailing on it, right? Okay, so with that break angle being so low, there's a lot of rattle in the nut. I don't think there's enough pressure, downward pressure in particular, on the treble strings. So what's the solution here for me? It's gonna be an easy one. I'm gonna get a couple of string trees, just kind of Stratocaster style string trees, and I'm gonna put them on the headstock here to pull the angle down. Now, 10S is not alone with this, uh, with what I think this issue is. Uh, some of you know I've got a Telecaster baritone, and that had the same exact issue, Fender, had that issue too, which I was kind of surprised, right? It's Fender. And I had to put a couple of string trees on that uh, particular guitar to get the break angle under control. So that's one nitpick um, that I would say that they could have done a better job on. The second nitpick, and it really, it's just a stylistic cosmetic nit nitpick, nitpick, and that is with the pickup mount. Man, there are too many words that are hard to say here in a, in a row. But the pickup mount, I would have liked to have seen a pickup ring around the pickup to kind of dress up the area. But instead, you can kind of see in into the route where the pickup is mounted. 
But just from a stylistic preference, I would have preferred a, a ring around the pickup. And if you go and look on 10S's website, you'll see that many of the guitars have pickup rings. I think it was just this particular guitar. The only other nitpick I have is I'm not particularly fond of the red volume and tone knobs. But you know what? I didn't specify what color knobs I wanted, so that was a choice that 10S made. That's just my preference. Not a problem at all. I'm sure that if you ordered a guitar from them, you would be able to say exactly what kind of knobs you wanted and what color. Finally, there is a little nicety on the back of the guitar. I don't believe I showed you this earlier, but the control cavity actually has a wood cover. And it looks like it might be an ebony wood cover. It looks very similar to the grain on the fretboard. So that actually is very cool. So all in all, I think for a new guitar company in China that has a different guitar tradition than the United States, I am really impressed with the build overall. I really like the tones and the sounds that you can get out of it. The, um, the playability is great. The setup was not perfect when I got it, but it was easily gotten perfect. You know what I mean? Just needed to tweak the intonation a little bit, uh, tweak the relief on the neck a little bit. Some of that could have just been from traveling halfway around the world, right? So with all truthfulness and honesty, really, I'm being straight up with you. I think 10S is definitely worth considering if you're interested in a custom build, and again, even though I don't have the pricing, if you're interested in a budget-friendly custom build, I'll say, it definitely contact them, see what features they can offer you, and you can see what the pricing is, obviously, to see if it would be worthwhile pursuing. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel. I've got ambient guitar-related content coming each and every week. I'll see all of you on the next video.